For now, it's my pleasure to introduce Petra Sardas, who will be talking about probing molecular cloud surfaces at k -Band. Take it away. Thanks, Annika. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to share with you briefly a uh, small project we've been working with with Larry and Dave and some other collaborators, uh, where we're trying to push or not push, but try to see how we can use the GVT at, high, at the higher frequencies you can observe to study the surfaces of molecular clouds. Uh, the basic idea here is well, molecular clouds are the sites of star formation, so they play a central role in the lifetime of galaxies. Uh, and most of the gas in these molecular clouds, it's uh, actually in these schemes known as photo dissociation regions, where basically the UV photons uh, dominate the chemistry and physical properties of the gas. And because of this, then in, terms, in turn, you have that if you think of a galaxy, most of the baryonic mass that's not locked in stars is actually in PDRs. So when you're looking at a galaxy far, far away and you're studying the gas, most likely it's going to be coming from the, PD, from the PDR emission, especially at the infrared wavelength. So if we want to understand what's going on in these systems, it's very convenient to study them locally so we can really understand the microphysics and what's going on. And if you are curious, there's an excellent review by Mark Wolfire that came out this year, explaining more about photo association regions and also X-ray dominated regions. Uh, in terms of how this looks like, if we're very cartoonish and we simplify a lot of things, what we have is at some point we have our massive, massive stars emitting lots of radiation, particularly UV photons, which will ionize all the gas around them. They will also uh, those uh, feedback through winds and other things. But basically, once these UV photons uh, cannot no longer ionize hydrogen, so they get given their H2 region, and then get a layer where you can ionize carbon because it has a lower ionization potential than hydrogen. At some point, the UV radiation is, uh, drops to a level where you can hydrogen can start to combine two molecules, and then uh, well, the carbon will remain ionized. This is the you might have heard of these famous sealed arc uh, molecular gas regions. And then you keep moving and you get your traditional molecular cloud traced by CO. And the deeper you get ices and other things, uh, which I honestly don't understand. But um, what I want to focus here is on the scheme. So any, anything where you have uh, ionized carbon. So for these regions in particular, um, the far infrared line of C plus uh, uh, 115 microns is an excellent proof of these uh, regions. If you look in, at this particular example, uh, if you compare, for example, the ammonia emission from the Ryan A molecular cloud with what you see in uh, C plus, you see that the C plus is a lot more whiskier and the filament itself looks a bit broader. That's because you're probing this envelope rather than the skeleton of the, of the molecular cloud. And you also see other things like, for example, the, this bright rim, the bubble around the, the massive stars, it shows up much more clearly in C plus uh, than in uh, the molecular gas where you, in, in particular in ammonia, where you don't really see any of the gas associated with this, um, with this, you don't see much of the gas associated with this bubble. So it's, it's a great probe of uh, this envelope, the C plus line. The problem, of course, is that uh, we don't have uh, at the moment any, well, so PSP is trying, but um, it's not clear, it's hard to observe this line in general, particularly in the local ISM. And uh, you're also limited in terms of resolution to uh, roughly 15 arc seconds, uh, just because uh, there's no interferometers yet uh, operating at those frequencies. Uh, so we use in turn then the weaker cosine of C plus, that's carbon radio recombination lines. These lines are also probing uh, the, the these ionized uh, layers of the molecular cloud. But because the temperature, the, these lines are very sensitive to temperature, you're actually probing a bit deeper into the molecular cloud. I mean, into the PDR than with C plus. That's what we're showing here. You have the PDR structure. We have Temperature uh, shown by this dotted line of the abundance of, uh, of uh, ionized carbon and uh, free electrons. So you know you see that most of your free electrons come from the ionization of carbon, and you see C plus uh, is really coming from the hotter layers, and then the recombination line emission 
uh, is coming mainly from the coldest layers. And of course, as you go deeper, you get the CO emission. So uh, this is a great probe of these layers, of the coldest portion of these layers. It's extinction free, of course. And uh, because, well, in general, these lines are always going to be uh, optically thin. So it's a great probe of the gas kinematics as well. Um, it is a great complement to the far infrared C plus line. I'm going to show that in a second. And uh, thinking about K band in particular, you can observe roughly 10 of these lines over the full range of K band. And that means that if you get enough instantaneous bandwidth, you can just stack these lines together to increase the signal to noise ratio, very similar to what you're doing with the uh, dot band. Uh, so, why these are a great complement? Well, basically, because C, uh, uh, particularly 13 C, uh, the temperature dependence is different from that of the, the recombination lines. So, when you look at these two lines together, and if you add more lines, you can constrain very well the gas, the volume density of the gas, and the temperature of the gas. And here, for example, we're showing the constraints. If you look at 13 C, plus and over the carbon alpha emission, you get these red lines. And then if you look at higher order transitions of the carbon recombination lines, carbon beta and carbon gamma, you get these other constraints. And then when you combine all of these things, you get this uh, small region of gas properties that's allowed by the models. So you can then derive the density, volume density of the gas and the temperature, which is great because then you can also study the thermal pressure, pressure, the turbulent pressure of the gas and other things. So for this particular project, we wanted to target something that's bright and iconic. So the Ryan Bard was the perfect uh, candidate, um, which is basically an almost edge on production of the Orion A molecular cloud. So you get the molecular, uh, you get the source of ionizing radiation up here. And then you have the molecular cloud basically tilting towards the observer. So you can see the stratification almost edge on. And because it's nearby, because it's bright, it's, uh, it's been very, very well studied. And there's uh, this uh, really nice uh, project. And you mentioned, for example, PDRs for all, which is targeting the, the Orion bar. And uh, we're hoping to learn a lot more about it uh, using ALMA, the GVT, and the BLA. So for this particular uh, project, what we wanted to do was uh, map it using the KFPA. Um, we spent two and a half hours to get this map here on the right. So you can see in color the carbon by the recombination line emission, which shows very clearly the Ryan bar. And then in blue, you get helium uh, recombination line emission because helium has a higher ionization potential than carbon. This is basically probing the H2 region. And you can, again, see the stratification, right? Helium goes up to here. And then you get carbon peaking a bit deeper. And the main idea, then, is to combine this with the BLA to get maps at five or second resolution, which would enable us to study the morphology and kinematics of the ionized gas in this region. And we're also, uh, we haven't done this yet, but it's, it should happen this winter. But we're going to observe the same region with Argus. We, already have ALMA observations. And the idea is that then, with both sets of observations, we can get roughly five arc second resolution. And combining these two lines at three millimeters and at uh, K band, we can then uh, get maps of density over the, the, the Orion bar. So well, that's basically what we still, it still needs to happen. We need to combine the data and uh, add in the, the Argus data. And hopefully, that will do some really beautiful maps of density and temperature. And uh, in the future, we would like to target other bright PDRs, particularly the ones that were targeted by the SOFIA feedback program, because then we can also fold in the C information. And uh, there might be other um, things we can try to do, like target uh, regions where we see uh, C plus in self absorption, because uh, the recombination lines are optically thin. They wouldn't be affected by this. So you can actually probe those regions better. And I'll leave the summary up and end there. Thank you. Question? Anyone? So it looks like your um, parameterization of volume and temperature really depended on a lot of very faint lines. 
13 carbon plus and you know C gamma and C beta. Do you have the signal noise to detect those and really do these constraints? Maybe in Orion. The, well, yeah, this, this particular observation was done with the Iran 30 meter and it was targeting some complex carbon molecules. Um, so we got this basically as a side thing. So there we had the, enough signal noise. What we're doing now is instead going to Argus and the KFPA because then you get enough leeway in, you need lines which are separate enough in terms of frequency or principal quantum number to play this game. Um, and yeah, you, with the GVT, and if you were to map, it would be a lot of time to get those. So you need a pretty lines. hefty PDR. Yeah. Okay. So you, it, it's great work, actually. The, if you go back a plot to the, um, the map, yeah, that one there. The, so that temperature of the gas is quite a nice, it looks like a fairly simple function, uh, basically, uh, but it doesn't quite turn into like the density of the cloud or that, or the, you know, the, but you could using that then combine a lot of different measurements and sort of, but it looks like this, is that a, a model that has how many parameters? Is it like just the one parameter? It's like it must be two because of the one in the middle. Well, once you, this is from the Milan PDR code. And once you fix the microphysics, so things like your PIH abundance and like your reaction rates and so on, it, the, the basic structure depends only on the strength of the radiation field and the density of the gas in a simple either, and then you assume that's either a constant density or that's a isobaric uh, region. Uh, but the, the trick is getting the microphysics right, like what's the extinction curve, what are the, the things like that. Well, um, this, the AV is the extinction curve, right? So not, not, that's just the, well, that's the extinction, but not the, basically a dust uh, composition that how it, the RV creates the AV. Yeah. And in this region, we don't do this really well because it's been studied like so, so much that those things are relatively well constrained. If you happen to have more questions, I'm, I'm very sorry I have to cut this short, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but if you happen to have more questions, especially people on Zoom, please use the Slack and or email and message Peter with you. Slack, other people can also chime in if they want.